Are you interested in an MBA focused on analytics, leadership, and advancing technology? Come have a listen. Today's guest is the Executive Director, Master's Admissions at Carnegie Mellon University's Tepper School of Business. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dreams. Welcome to the 425th episode of Admission Straight Talk, Accepted Podcast. Thanks for tuning in. Are you ready to apply to your dream business schools? Are you competitive at your target programs? Acceptance MBA admissions calculator can give you a quick reality check. Just go to accepted.com slash MBA quiz, complete the quiz, and you'll not only get an assessment, but tips on how to improve your chances of acceptance. Plus, it's all free. Again, use the calculator at accepted.com slash MBA quiz to obtain your free assessment. It gives me great pleasure to have on Admissions Straight Talk, Kelly Wilson, who is the Executive Director of Master's Admissions at the Carnegie Mellon University Tepper School of Business. Kelly earned her bachelor's at Grove City College and three master's degrees, an MBA from George Mason and an MS and MIS from the University of Pittsburgh Joseph Katz Graduate School of Business. After working for several years in business, she began her career in admissions at Katz in 1999. In 2008, she became Assistant Dean and Director of MBA Admissions at Georgetown's McDonough School, where she served for four years, and which is where I think I first had the pleasure of meeting Kelly. She then returned to Pittsburgh and became Executive Director of Master's Admissions at CMU Tepper and has been working in that capacity for the last almost nine years. Kelly, welcome to Admissions Straight Talk. Thanks, Linda. It's great to be here. Okay. We're going to start with a few general questions and then move into more, I guess, timely related topics. Um, your title is Executive Director of Master's Admissions at CMU Tepper. How many master's programs are you overseeing and what are they? Sure. So we have our MBA program in three different formats, the full-time two-year program, our part-time online hybrid program, and our part-time flex MBA. In addition, we have uh, the MS in product management and an MS in business analytics. We will be um, launching a couple of a master's in the near future. So um, keep your eyes out for that information. And you're teasing us with that. <laughs> what is the difference between the three MBA programs? I got, it's a full-time two years, sure. there's a hybrid, and then is the last one all online? Yeah, no. So the, the part-time online hybrid is our online program. Okay. There is a, um, an in-person component to it. That's why the hybrid. Um, and so our, the way that it works is the full-time, or I'm sorry, the part-time students will come to campus about every six and a half, seven weeks between many semesters where they'll do a weekend together sure. on campus. Um, the part-time flex was our traditional Pittsburgh-based part-time program. The really cool thing now is that our part-time students in both programs will spend the first year together in that part-time online hybrid format, giving flexibility to um, both groups of students. And then the part-time flex students from the Pittsburgh region can choose to take more traditional evening classes if, they, if they'd like, or they can continue on the online hybrid format. Got it, okay, sounds good. Now, that's, that's quite a menu of options just in terms of convenience. Let's focus on, in on the MBA options. Can you give uh, an overview of the CMU Tepper full-time MBA programs? I guess you gave a very broad overview of the part-time programs. For those listeners who aren't that familiar with Tepper's approach, focusing on the more distinctive elements, and you can bring in the, the part-time options too, if you'd like. Absolutely. It is hard not to bring in the part-time options when we're talking about the full-time program, because in fact, they are the same MBA taught by the same faculty. And one of the few MBA programs that allow students to transfer between programs between oh, right. uh -huh. um, after year one. So for, for our MBAs, the, what really sets Tepper of, apart is the combination of leadership development and analytic skills that the students get in the program. If we first talk about analytics within the core of our program, which is a fairly robust core, you will see that in addition to the typical business classes, 
We've got three specific classes that focus on developing those analytical skills. And it's a, it's a, a probability and statistics course, an optimization course, and a statistical decision-making course where students will learn optimization, modeling skills, as well as the business fundamentals in the core. And then throughout the electives, they'll apply those tools, both the business fundamentals, but the analytical skills will apply them throughout the rest of the curriculum. And those three analytical courses are part of the core that are required. They are. That's right. Okay, they for are. all students. For both, for both full-time and part-time. Got okay. it. And then all of our students as well will work with our Accelerate Leadership Center. So we have a leadership development component that's part of the core curriculum as well. Our executive coaches who uh, previously worked in corporate role, roles, our uh, staff on the Accelerate Leadership Center team, they focus on development plans for each of our students. Those, these plans are tailored and individual based on the experience and expertise of each student as they come in. And so whether a student is full-time or part-time, their work with Accelerate begins with an assessment tool that will give them a sense of the leadership skills that they may want to focus on during their time in the program and the leadership skills they may want to leverage while they're in the program. This is on top of, of course, some uh, courses that our faculty faculty deliver in, in within leadership as well. Okay, all right, great. I also noticed in preparing for the call that Tepper has a rather distinctive approach to concentrations and tracks in its curriculum. Can, can you go over that for our listeners? Yeah, of course. Students at Tepper are required to take at least one concentration. Many of our students will um, have multiple concentrations. So in an MBA program, it's typical that three classes will give you a concentration. And so that's true at Tepper as well. But often you'll see Tepper students have two, three, and sometimes four concentrations. And it really depends on what skills they're trying to develop while they're in the program. The breadth of electives provides them an opportunity to gain different concentrations uh, across the skills that they're looking to develop. And then our tracks, if you think about the tracks as kind of a, a little bit of a deeper dive than a concentration, the tracks are a pre-described set of courses that give students a depth of study in a particular area, whether it's business analytics, technology strategy and product management, energy business, entrepreneurship and um, management of innovation and product development. Those are the, the tracks that we offer and they're usually eight to 10 electives make up the track and That's then more um, comprehensive it is it is and it's a much deeper dive into that area and then um, they will have a capstone as part of their track as well to fulfill the capstone requirement for the program is everybody required to pursue a track no no it's absolutely up to the the desire of the student so everyone must do a concentration the tracks are available, and, and um, there are some tracks that students must apply to become part of them. How many concentrations are there, and how many tracks are there? Yeah, so there are 13 concentrations and 15 tracks at this point. Oh, wow. Okay. And are, the, are both more functionally oriented, you know, marketing, accounting, et cetera, for, let's say for the concentrations, and then product development or, or entrepreneurship for the, for the tracks? That's right. That's right. So you would you would see the functional areas on the concentrations and then the the tracks may be broader than a functional area. So energy business. Uh, well, if you think about that, it will have a broad yeah. set of courses in it, um, but that will give the students a very specific skill set. What are some of the tracks, man? I mean, the concentrations, I, can, I assume, are pretty standard, but what are some of the tracks? They're, they're business analytics. Right technology strategy and product management. That's the second track. Um, energy business is the third. Entrepreneurship is the fourth. And then the fifth is management of innovation and product development. Okay, so that's pretty, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Yep. Now, how have pandemic restrictions affected the MBA experience and program at San Tepper? And perhaps with the, since we're all hopeful, hope, hope, hope that, the pandemic is more and more in the rear view mirror. What of the 
adaptations that Sammy Tepper made to the pandemic do you think it's going to keep? Yeah, so I think it's it's important for us as we've gone through this just unbelievable situation globally that we that we do focus on the positives, which are the innovations, right? So whether it's from an admission standpoint or from an experience standpoint, you know, our students had to think about how do we build community in a way that's very different than what we've done before. And they were and they were very creative in that regard. And one of the things that that I like. Um, best about it is, well, I guess there are two things. One, there was much more interaction between our full-time students and our part-time students because the activities were virtual. Uh, It really kind of allowed for the students to participate in in activities that they might not have been able to before, whether it was a, a corporate speaker or alumni coming in to talk with a club um, and and that's that's the that's the segue to the second favorite thing is just access to alumni and and corporate representatives. If you think about it, no longer did people have to come to campus. Instead, they were a Zoom call away, and really made themselves available. Our alumni were fantastic making themselves available for different activities because, frankly, it wasn't as heavy a lift. They didn't have to travel. Yeah. And um, it really made for a robust experience for, for the group. Yeah, that, that, yeah, certainly the availability of, of experts, you know, was expanded by, by the pandemic. Yeah. So people didn't have to travel, weren't expected to travel. And I guess the schools, and Tepper included, were much more willing to go with the virtual experience. Yeah, and, and, and learn from it and improve upon it and, and then come up with, um, you know, ideas for, for what will continue. And I think that en- engagement is one of the things that we'll be able to ha- hold on to. Right, right. Don't people know about CMU Tepper that you would like them to know? Or, or what's a common misconception that you would like to dispel? Yeah, you know, uh, this, is a, this is a question that I think is really interesting. And as I, as I think about it, there's a there's a misperception that that a candidate must have a heavy tech or quant background to attend and do well at Tepper. And the reality is candidates really only need to demonstrate the aptitude and we'll teach them the rest. I was thinking about some feedback we got from our diversity weekend and a, a student said that they were previously intimidated by Tepper's reputation of being tech and quant heavy and thought that you know, the experience in, in connecting with the, with the community would be, people would be very rigid and it would be a very dry experience. But, but the reality was um, people were warm and reassuring and this person walked away understanding that there's a place for all, students of all backgrounds. That to me is a testament of something that is, you know, someone that came to visit that saw that difference, which I think is really exciting. Right. Now, Obviously, they have to have the aptitude, they have to have the desire to learn. How are you, I mean, are you looking for a high quant score on the GMAT or the GRE? Are you looking for high grades in quant classes previously? I, I, that would be you know, obvious things. How else can somebody demonstrate that aptitude? Yeah, so you know, through their work experience, work that they're doing, I, I would you know, encourage candidates to share that type of information as well. So the application of those skills mm-hmm. is, is something that um, you know, we think about as well. That happens at work and it may also happen outside of work through an entrepreneurial endeavor or just you know, something they're interested in outside of work. And so you're right, it is, it is important that the, there's foundation, whether it's through um, demonstrated coursework or, or a test score, but there is a broader way to, to share information about those skills as well. Is Calc 1 required? Calculus. Um, we, we still have a calculus requirement. I think the change over the past couple of years, if a, if a candidate does not have a Calc, and it's not necessarily Calc 1, it's a calculus course, so a business calculus class yeah. is a requirement as well. If, if a student does not have calculus per se, once they're admitted, we've developed a calculus fundamentals course. Our faculty have developed it to allow for people that may not have taken it yet to fulfill that requirement that way before they matriculate. 
All right, great. Yeah. Now let's turn to the applicant application itself. Is CMU Tepper planning to continue offering test waivers? And what percentage of applicants uh, who applied for a waiver were granted a waiver last year? Yeah, sure. So yeah, we do continue or plan to continue to offer test waivers. You know, it's a it's a, a an interesting opportunity to consider candidates that that may not otherwise have applied or that really lean into other parts of their application, specifically being the academic work. For us, the percentage of or percentage of applicants where test waivers were granted, about half of the applications were, were granted, wait, not, not of the applications, of the people that applied for a test waiver. waiver. Yeah, about half of those Thank who you. applied for a test waiver were granted the waiver. Okay. And if, if someone is not granted a waiver, you know, we would encourage them to consider taking some time and if they if they so desire take the test and then and then apply so it's it's not a deny of a, a denial of admission it's it's just a decision about the test waiver and i assume you want the test for them to show aptitude whether it's verbal skills or quantitative skills right that that's right and i think for you know for different candidates those those two components of the test may come into play a little bit differently and so I, you know, it's, it's important for a candidate to reflect on their application for someone that may not have as many quantitative courses, the, the, the test may help them in that regard. Um, and so just to, to kind of step back and reflect might be, might be helpful. And, and of course we will offer application workshops where we'll take a deep dive into that with candidates. Right. I mean, I've, I've actually spoken and written quite a bit that that the test can be an opportunity for, for the applicant. I'm not pro or contesting, I don't, yeah. but um, you, you know, it's, it depends on the applicant, whether they, you know, whether you know, it'll, it'll help them or hurt them. Right. Now, Tepper last year had one essay question. It was the Tepper community is dynamic and unique. Each community member's individual journey has shaped them into classmates who are collaborative, supportive, and inclusive. Describe how you have overcome adversity during your journey. What did you learn about yourself and how has that shaped who you are? And you say 300, 500, 350 to 500 words. Are you planning to ask the same question? Are you planning any changes to the application? We are going to ask the same question. I was super okay. excited. Um, at, at the admissions committee in general was excited about the types of essays that we were able to read and the information we were able to learn about candidates. For us, community is important. And, you know, being a contributing member of the community is important. And, and I think the things that we go through in life do shape us. And oh, you know, grit is one of those words that, you know, is becoming um, a little bit cliche maybe, but, but the idea of being able to face something that's really hard and, and could for some people, you know, stop them where they are, but being able to just face that and overcome it and then grow from it is something I think that contributes to who we are as contributors and to, you know, to our communities. And, and we think that's important. Yes, absolutely. Um, it's, I also found the question kind of interesting because we certainly talk about how events shape people it's like there's almost a pivot in the question from um the community involvement to overcoming adversity anyways it's just this is my take on the question yeah i mean it, it, it's interesting because we we have moved to one question but there's a lot in that one question oh, we yeah. kind of dig into what are the most common mistakes that you see applicants make on their applications um, so, so those I would include not proofreading or maybe using, not doing, using your search and replace when you're using a core essay to, to then develop for another school. And so to get a, a different school's name in the application that you're reading for your school, you know, that, that never makes ad com, you know, that raises an eyebrow, I should say. But I think, I think the, another mistake that we see is for applicants who apply without really getting to know the community. And so the application is a chance. And again, I'm going back to community and how it's important for us. The application process is a chance for people 
to get to know the community and to engage with students, faculty, staff, alumni through a variety of, of different ways, and then demonstrate in the application, convey not just that they've done these things, but what they've learned from these things. And so, you know, we're not just looking to, to understand that an applicant has spoken to three current students and two alumni, but what about those conversations resonated? What excites you about what that might mean for your future as a Tepper student? And, and how has that impacted your desire to attend Tepper? I think, I think for someone to, to miss that opportunity, to me, is, is a mistake that's avoidable and one that I think is easily corrected. Okay, so it's, it's not just the what, it's the so what. That's, that's exactly right. Okay. okay. Now, in light of the pandemic, the events of 2020, I realize we're halfway through 2021 now, but it's hard to believe. Um, and the, you know, just the, the craziness of the last 18 months, let's put it that way. Are you reading applications with a slightly different perspective? I mean, you mentioned that grit is increasingly important, resilience. Are you weighing certain qualities more than you did before 2020? Yeah, you, I, I suspect we all will to a certain extent. You mentioned grit and resilience, and those are you know, always characteristics that we've paid attention to. Last year's essay has really focused, you know, given a bit more in a focus, more of a focus on that. I suspect for all of us, our empathy has grown given the challenging times that we've lived through. COVID didn't happen in a place far away. It happened to all of us. It happened in our own communities and our own families. And so I think our abilities to put ourselves in the position of others who've gone through challenging times is, is enhanced. And I suspect that may be kind of the, the adjustment. I don't know that there's anything specific that we'll be looking for that would be different. In the end, we want to make sure that we're admitting candidates that we believe will be successful in the program. Um, but I suspect that we're going to have a, a, a robust set of essays um, as we read through applications this year. Um, That's a good question, you should. Yeah. Can you touch on the deferred admissions for a college seniors program for a second? Is it only for college seniors or is it for people who are getting a master's who haven't worked full time? Uh, how can one get in? Sure, absolutely. So, so we, we will consider those who are completing a master's degree. And, and so this has been a little bit of a soft launch given all that, we, all that was happening with COVID. And so our focus initially has been with outreach to undergrads. And I think that that will expand in terms of our outreach and the work we're doing will be a, a bit more broad, but certainly the focus really is on those who haven't yet entered the workforce. And so, you know, as, as we're looking at those candidates, we have one of our staff members, Gina Cachetti, who's the admissions officer in our team, who's really been the champion for this effort. And, and we encourage anyone who's interested to contact her, contact information on the website. Anyone that's interested and, and meets the requirements of attending a U.S. program, she will help you navigate the admissions process. I think it's one that may for some people be a little, I, let me say it this way, a guide would be helpful. Um, okay. and, and Gina's the perfect person to do that. And so again, we're looking for candidates who in two to five years will come and be part of the full-time program. So, you know, the, the academic curriculum that, that, can, that these folks um, have undertaken is important. We'll look at their internships. To what extent have they been engaged in their undergrad experience? And then they'll interview as part of the admissions process now. When they plan to matriculate, that's the point that will um, consider them for scholarship. And so again, it's a, it's a process that, that will help, you, help candidates navigate. And we're looking forward to welcoming our first group in a couple of years since we, since we just admitted the group this year. What percentage of the class, are, are you planning to increase the class by the number of seniors admitted or, or senior deferred admits, I should say, or, or what, what percentage of the class do you anticipate coming from the deferred admit program? Sure. We do have some room to expand the class. I'm not sure we've settled on exactly to what extent, but this will, at least at this point, this group will augment 
the traditional size of the class. So that's so fairly small. There. Yeah, we're a relatively small program. So given that we've moved into our new space, we no longer have the same constraints that we had a few years ago. And so we, we have a little bit of flexibility. Okay, great. Now, some applicants have specific elements of their background that give them grave concern. How do you view applicants who had a dip in grades or perhaps a period of unemployment due to depression or emotional issues? Life happens, right? Yes. And I think, I think we're just now as a society becoming more open to what that might mean. And I think context is key. Life is sometimes messy. And, and the more that we can understand, not that, not that a candidate should you know, give all of the details about, about what has happened, but giving enough information using the optional essay to add some context for, for the admissions committee can be helpful. And I think now that we've kind of made some advancements as a, as a you know, society, mental health issues are something that aren't as um, protected in terms of just what we wanna to disclose to people. Again, not necessary to share all the details, but context is super helpful. Okay, so in terms of like, obviously I'm, I'm gonna guess that if somebody is in the midst of a depressive episode, that could give pause. But if somebody five years ago had a dip in grades because of a de depressive episode, that's not going to be uh, necessarily an issue in and of itself. Is that not correct? Necess not necessarily, because we can see then what they've done after that. Right. Right. And so, and so, um, I think what the context allows us to do is to understand that moment in time or that period of time, and then, and then, hopefully, what we see is a is a kind of a, a you know, a, a someone regaining their footing and being. Right. In a, Emotional health. Successful. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And how about somebody who has an academic inf infraction as an undergrad or a misdeme misdemeanor, like a, a DUI, for example, on their record? Our approach to those is that we would like to, to see the candidate owning the situation, um, whether it's an infraction, whether it's a misdemeanor. You know, sometimes we talk about, you know, did the person give a newspaper account? Or did they kind of give us um, a little bit more, again, context in terms of what happened, what did you learn, um, and how have you moved on and done better? And so, you know, there, there are some parallels just to the, you know, to this, to the question we were answering before. We, we you know, we all understand um, no, not one of us is perfect and things happen in life. And, we're looking to, to really learn more about the impact that's had and where people have grown. Well, the, the earlier question is about something that happens to you. to you. The academic infraction or misdemeanor is about a mistake. That's right, that's right. And I guess for the parallels I was referring to is really context is important. Context is important in both cases, but I, I think there's, you know, and, you, and, you, and you said this, there's an assumption of responsibility that right. you want to see in the latter case, right? right. It makes, makes perfect sense, right? What advice would you give to someone? Uh, as we're talking, it's now second half of June. Uh, you're, this is going to air in July. What advice would you give someone planning to apply for the fall 2022 matriculating class? So that application is coming up pretty soon. Yeah. My, I think my advice would be learn as much as you can. Different programs offer different things. There's not one right, right program for an individual. There's probably a group of programs where people would thrive. And so to, to do the work to understand which schools could be a good fit for you does take work, exactly, exactly that. We've developed a tool called Chart Your Path and it's on the website. It's a series of steps that candidates take. There's a little bit of gamification because at the end, if you complete the steps, you earn an application fee waiver. <laughs> um, and so it allows, it allows us to offer to candidates a way for them to understand, here's the first group of activities that you should undertake. And then once you've done that, 
the next step would be this group of activities. And it really leads you from the standpoint of, you know, make sure you have your hands on the view book and, um, or eyes on the view book and, and read through and understand, you know, down through the process of now's the right time to reach out to current students and understand how, you know, how their experience or what their experience has been through the process of applying. And then the last process is preparing for the interview. And so we're literally walking people through the steps that we believe will set them up for success in terms of being prepared for our admissions process. Well, that sounds like quite a tool. We're going to link to that too. Um, Okay. Um, What would you like me to ask you? This is, I I love this question because um, one could get you know, get pretty creative, but I, as I was thinking about just kind of advice in general, the, the question would be in the summer months prior to joining an MBA program, what's your advice to incoming students? And understand okay. that, that this is really for the next group of students, but very timely for anyone that might, um, that might hear that advice now. And so to answer the question, my advice would be rest, <laughs> okay. Um, enjoy yourself, take some time to take care of yourself, right? Because you're you're making a shift from working to student life again. And while, you know, I, I talked to student after student who says, you know, I've worked really hard for, you know, the three and a half, four years that that I've been in, in the corporate world as an as an example. And you know, student life is is gonna be a breeze. And in some ways, it's going to be harder than you think. So that the the pace of of what you need to do is different. The the skills and and just kind of when you need to do what is is a, is a bit different. And so in some ways, it, it could be a bit harder. But it's absolutely going to be one of the best and most rewarding experiences of their lives. And so, you know, take some time before you're jumping into all of that. To, to really put yourself in a position where you're ready for that. Wonderful advice, thank you. Thank you for posing the question and answering it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Kelly, I wanna thank you so much for joining me today. Where can listeners learn more and listeners of potential applicants learn more about CMU Tepper's MBA programs and other master's programs for that matter? Yeah, the best place to start is on the website at tepper.cmu.edu. Okay, we're going to include links to tepper.cmu.edu in the show notes at exhibit.com slash 425. We're also going to include uh, links to related articles and interviews. They're all link- going to be linked to, again, at exhibit.com slash 425. Quick reminder, don't miss the MBA admissions quiz. Find out if you're really ready to apply and competitive at your target schools. Take the quiz, exhibit.com slash MBA quiz today. Listener, thank you, too, for joining Kelly Wilson and me for our 425th episode. I still can't believe those numbers. If you find the show worthwhile, please subscribe. Make sure you don't miss any future shows, be they with admissions directors, professors, current students, test prep pros, or alumni doing great things. Thanks again for coming. This is Admissions Straight Talk, produced by Accepted, and I'm your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week.